Tēnā koe. Kia ora. Dame Nolene. Taurua. It's really awesome to be chatting with you. It's, uh, it's such my, oh, it's my pleasure and I am so excited to be chatting with you too. So for this quarter, I see that you have got your hair <laughs> yeah, and makeup yeah, done yeah, yeah. and your clothing yeah, is gorgeous. Yeah. Was that just for me? Well, it is for you. It really is. But also we did a bit of a promo shoot as well. We're heading into Netball World Cup. My beautiful, uh, I was going to say assistant, but she's not. She actually tells me what I need to do around the media and that. So she uh, got that sorted this morning and hence coming in looking like this. I'm a tracksuit type of girl, bit of slippers. Um, so I feel really beautiful at the moment. You look really beautiful Thank too. you. Yeah, nice. Can we... I. I I've done some research on you, and I've got eight pages of this. Oh. <laughs> Great. Great. So, uh, and it's no point me telling you your story, but there's mm. a lot of story to tell. So there's mm. so there's a part of me that just doesn't know where to begin. Mm. Could could I could I ask you about when you had been into athletics and mm. you'd kind of grown out of that single person sport, and you were like, I want to be a team sport person, and you were playing and wanting to be in the Silver Ferns, and you didn't get in. Mm. And you had a knee injury and you were pregnant. Can you mm. tell us a bit about what life was like and what you were doing at that season? Look, it's quite a, actually, a, it's interesting that you picked that bit up because um, I keep saying to my children, actually, when I finished school, they, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And there was probably two things that I was really clear about. One was going overseas. Um, and the second thing was not getting pregnant. You know, and and it's you know my kids go oh God, like this sort of, but it was sort of a thing that happened in my um, with my mates and where I grew up and people that I knew, and it wasn't definitely not a not a negative or anything like that. But I, you know, going overseas was one of the things that I. I was really focused about um, sport at that time was just something that I did um, but really you know I didn't have any intention to at that time be a silver fern or you know anything like that so went overseas do what you do when you go overseas and came back um, and at that time my parents were down in Wellington and I was a poor person, you know, post uh, touring around the place, went down there and stayed with them and sort of my eyes opened up and opportunities presented. And at that time, um, a club at PIC um, I was involved with and, you know, like growing up, my mother was always, she loved netball, yeah. loved netball. Um, my family always around netball or around sport, you know, these little communities. Yeah. And um, so opportunity uh, presented where one of the, uh, Margaret Martinger at that time, who is a, once again an, an icon or a legend in our sport, um, was retiring. So uh, opened up once again a position for me and went in and pretty much it all sort of started from there. So, yeah. So when you say just opened up a position for you, you're, you must be playing netball at this point. Do you yeah. think netball could be a career? Are you thinking that? No, I mean in those in those years, it definitely wasn't a career as such as it is now. Like you get paid, um, and it is a professional career. And you know, like when you add up the contracting and certain, mm. uh, whether it's the silver ferns or other clubs that you belong to, it's it's a good wicket. You know, better than we were, and we had a pair of shoes, and that was fantastic at that time as well. So, it wasn't a career. It was more, I think, you know. Mm, Playing for New Zealand is one of those things that, whether it's playing or coaching, that not very many people get the privilege to do. And even though it was an intention right at the beginning, as you sort of get in, muscle up with everybody else, you think, hey, it could be possible. And slowly, you know, good things happen, other things don't, and just get on the pathway. So, um, yeah. So you're playing at PIC. Mm. You're playing with a pretty awesome group of yeah. women. Yeah. And at what point do you go? I I want to represent New Zealand. Like, what, what did it, was there a was there a moment? What what was it for you yeah. that made you go? Actually, 
this could be in reach for me. Oh, look, it's uh, when I when I think back on these sort of these these moments in your life I find and you know, I'm I was always one of those kids that had the talent. My father always said, You're lazy, um, and you need to get out and run or do extra things. I go, Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. Was he right or Yeah, he was. Huh. You know, when I think about it now and even what I did in those times, what I could have, should have, even while I was in New Zealand, there was more that I could have done. Um, and in hindsight, you know, you look back and think, oh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't bad, but I knew I could have been better. Um, so one particular year, um, it's actually with my oldest daughter. Um, I was pregnant with her, still playing for Wellington. Um, I'd done my ACL. Um, and I remember distinctly, I had to go through the, you know, you go through the surgery and you have a three quarter, in those days, you have a three quarter length cast. Oh, so, you know, you're wearing that for like six months or so. So, you know, you've got a lot of time that you're thinking about things. Yeah. And in those moments, especially having a, you know, my first child, do I want to play? Do I not? With my knee, I knew I had to do something with that on rehab. And then all of a sudden, a lightning bolt came out of the sky and said, yes, I want to play. So I think I was a late bloomer, if I, you know, 25, 26 really? um, on entry into the Silver Ferns. And once again, it wasn't that I earned that position. It was just that somebody else got injured. I wasn't selected in the first instance. Someone else got injured. That opened up an opportunity for me. So... Let's go to you're not selected. What, you've had the lightning bolt. You've mm. rehabbed your leg. Mm. You've got a baby that you have to deal mm. with. The sport doesn't pay. Mm. You have the lightning bolt and you don't get selected. Mm. How's that? Yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's I don't know. It's You just get on with it. Just get on with it. You just get on with it. Yep. Um, you look at yourself. I think then, you know, I'm a bit more mature. It's not just about me. It's about, you know, my family and things like that. And you get on to whatever the next thing needs to be. I think, you know, because of these experiences and now that I'm a coach, I sort of understand different pathways that people go through just because that moment of time may not be a selection or might not be the right time. There's always time that you can come back in and around. It's just getting the timing right. Um, so, yeah. Did you yeah. hold on in that season? Did you think, oh, well, I'll keep playing for Wellington and I'll yeah. keep my fitness up and I love the game. Yeah. I'll just keep going. I did keep going. Um, I, at that time I was in the, well, what we call the New Zealand A's underneath. Yep. We were in um, competition. Um, the other person, as I say, unfortunately got injured, opened up an opportunity, and then I got caught in at that time. So, um, and then it sort of really started from there. And they always say, once you're in, it's, it, the hardest is actually staying in. Oh, okay. Yeah, once you're in, it's staying in. You know, the expectation that comes on you. Um, What's hard about it? Other I think expectation, okay. basically. Um, more on yourself but more as well what other people um, expect from you now that you've sort of got the silver fern title, you know. So what was it like for dress. you being in the black dress wearing the silver fern? What what did it give you? Yeah, um, you know, the first thing that I remember distinctly is uh, my first test, singing the national anthem. And, oh, God, when I think of it, you know, these, oh... It's just sitting, you know, standing on the line once again um, with your mates, I think, you know, out on court, uh, how proud you are of yourself, but also your family and especially my mum. You know, she's an avid netballer and all her friends are and it's just how it has been in our family. So knowing how proud she would feel at that moment of time and my own family, my brothers and sisters. So always stirs up everybody when it's your first test. I know it and you can feel it so uh, that that was probably the introduction and um, because of that it's sort of you want to keep there you want to stay there you know you want to get more of that good feeling um, and once again it's it's a bit of a slog to stay there and you tell a funny story about the first time you took the court oh god um oh it's <laughs> all these stories <laughs> after sometimes I think oh why god, did I tell that story bad, just, can it be somebody out you know sometimes things stupid I just uh, you know, I remember going for the ball and it was one of my first balls and I just remember the ball just ricocheting off my head, you know, and it's sort of one of these things that I think, 
oh, no, oh, God, no. You know, like, it's not that you're dumb, no, like, it's not that, but, oh, God, you know, one of these, oh, these cringe moments. Um, I can't even remember if we won that game, but um, that was my first foray, that was my first touch, and, yeah, thankfully I didn't get any of that any other games. So, no, and it's not yeah. the whole story, is it? It's like oh, a moment know. can't encapsulate. No, but like, it feels like that sometimes, and a moment can't. It's just one moment, and you move on, but it's it's interesting how those moments, depending the circumstances or the situation or the context can really uh, etch a picture in your mind or your being. Yeah, I love the fact that you're saying it's not that you're dumb. Like you're mm. saying to yourself it's not that you're dumb because balls fly yeah. and body parts get in the way yeah, of balls, yeah, you know. Yeah, And things happen, don't yeah, they? Yeah, things happen. Yeah, like, like you getting into the silver ferns and then staying in the silver ferns, you know, which is the hard part. Mm. So I, I hear humility in you saying, you know, oh, I didn't really earn my spot. But once you were in the ferns, you earned your spot and stayed in the ferns for five years. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I suppose I didn't actually even take that time to think about it in that way because I put so much significance on my entry point into there. Mm. So, yeah, thank you. I didn't even, yeah. Yeah. Didn't even think of that. Yeah. Mm. Can we talk about another, I guess, kind of like... Um, a tenet of what I perceive to be how you do things, you do things with a lot of integrity. So I've heard um, it talked about that you might be offered a, a, a great role or a great opportunity, like becoming a dame, but you don't just be like, oh, yes. Um, you're like, I'm going to consider this, not just the impact on myself, but mm. the impact on my whanau. Mm. And in learning Te Reo Māori, um, the, the, just the baby beginnings that I've started mm. whānau first was this phrase that came up again and again and again and we know it translates to family first mm. but where the rubber hits the road is when we really do consider the whānau first mm. can you tell me what whānau first means to you and how it how it um, yeah impacts your way mm. of being yeah it's, as, as you know, it's big, eh? It's, it's, it is actually hard to explain because, I mean, obviously my immediate family, um, those ones that all I go home to every day, every night, um, and the impact on them, uh, especially my children. Um, you know, my husband at the moment can sort of flick things off, even though he's had an aggressive time, you know, has, <laughs> as I've come through as well and, and been quite protective of me. Yeah. But um, with, with the kids, it's sort of, you know, they, they have their own life. And it's how we can not only um, ensure that their life is as good as it can and not get caught up in stuff that I do or don't do, but that they're strong enough to uh, weather the storm, sometimes depending what the storm looks like, um, and still be their own person. Um, so I think that's really important and that's probably the starting point for me. Um, when things come in, obviously when my mum and dad were alive, they were always a sounding board and with my dad it wasn't just about the whānau, it was about the iwi, it was about our um, connection back up north um, and uh, how that either influences whether positive or negative and my ability to be able to think about those things. Um, I even think when I think of the Fano as well, you know, people within Netball New Zealand and all my mates and people who will give me sound um, advice. Mm -hmm. uh, once again, not necessarily things that I want to hear, but making sure that they tell me what they think so it's not going to come out of the woodwork and hit me between the eyes if, if something comes out that's negative for me, you know. So... Um, I have the immediate, I have my mates, I have my friends, I have my working buddies, I have my, um, my, my iwi up north and everything needs to be considered. Um, so it takes a wee bit of a time to go through that, but it always gets to the place where it sits. You know, and I and what does that feel it. like? What does describe what it's when it sits? How's that for you? Yeah, I'm I'm a real uh, I suppose I'm a spiritual person, and um, 
I, I find it hard to explain, but sometimes if I'm, it's sort of like when you're grounded, yeah. um, you know, there's a lot of things sometimes that goes through my head and I've got to get the answers or I've got to find a, a solution for something. Um, but I always find out that when I do all the research or I talk to a lot of people, I hear different thoughts and then it always comes down to filter. I always think filters down into my stomach. Uh, and then I, I know what that feel is and once it's there then I know which way to go um, so being patient on that um, and not forcing it and uh, once again getting different perspex- perspective helped me get into that frame and get into that feel it's, it's sort of it's a, I don't know it's just a, you know if you're grounding yourself it's yeah. got that feel where yeah. it just yeah, sits nice yes. so some people would call it gut instinct or, mm. or a gut feel or I like what you said it sits yeah I, and I would say I'd have peace about it mm. like yeah, the turmoil up yeah, here beautiful. is quietened down yes. and I feel at peace yes. with even if it's like a hard decision yes. and you know yeah. it's going to be not popular with everybody yeah. or it's going to be a lot of effort yeah. it's yeah it's, it's got a um, an inner strength Yes. as well you know so you've got that there and you've got your heart sort of I always think your heart's connected to it still a lot of things going around but you know that you can navigate these things that's going around and and go forth I think you know with 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 strength yeah and I think you know you talk about mana not necessarily or integrity of everybody else's perspective it's it's, it's yourself yeah um and 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 you're ready to move I love the fact that you are also saying you give yourself time to do that and you're patient because mm. it because it's really really um it can be very tense not yes. having the answers and yeah. not knowing what you're going to do yeah. like you're kind of living in this so so can we talk for a moment about you uh don't get selected for the coach of the silver ferns you've had this amazing amazing run with the magic where mm. the magic's the only team to win the ANZ Australia versus New Zealand competition the only mm. New Zealand franchise to win and you've been coaching now for I don't know yeah, uh, quite ages, a, ages. Yeah, a and you're ready to be a head coach yeah. and you go for the Silver Ferns and you don't get that position what well, when you heard no it's not you Nolene what what was that like for you yeah um one thing that I sort of knew going into that particular um what do you call it, interview, mm-hmm. was I had the choice. And uh, I think because I was sort of, uh, that was the third time actually that I went for an interview. So it wasn't, I wasn't a, you know. Newbie. It wasn't my, um, new to the rodeo sort of thing. So um, I had a choice in the interview whether there's sometimes you can sort of, how can I say this nicely? You can go with what you think they want you to hear. Um, you can go with what, you think they want to hear or you can go with what you want to say and it's actually a fine line you know what I mean there's because you've got to be smart about these things too and and also know I suppose um, where the organization wants to go and these sort of things so I thought going into this interview right I'm just I they got to know who I am and if I get the job or don't, or if I get the job, they got to know as to where and how I'm going to take it forward yeah. in my way. Yeah. And if they don't, that's absolutely fine because obviously I'm not the right person for the job or what the organisation wants. Yep. So I had actually got to, you know, you think about these grounded feelings yep. and knowing, mm-hmm. you know, at that moment of time, that's what I'm going to do, that's how I'm going to do it. So I was actually at peace once again, knowing that I didn't get the job because it was their choice and I was absolutely fine with it um, so th- probably the best thing is that I was really happy that I had sort of done my groundwork prior to the interview so good my mouth didn't go you know so people were, and Kes is really good too so sometimes my mouth goes you know immediately I didn't get the job roas me but um it didn't even come into my thinking um, so yeah, yeah, so good. Moved on. So then you went to Australia, yeah, and, and a new franchise, yeah, Sun Co- Sunshine Coast Lightning, yeah, yeah, brand new franchise. Yeah. You get to start from scratch. Yeah, was that cool? Way cool. 
You know, that's the, that's the, the interesting thing. One door closes, you know, another one opens. I went to Southland um, just because of the timing for a short-term contract. Um, and then this opportunity opened over in Sunshine Coast um, where it was a new competition there. One of the amazing things for me was the, um, the club was owned by Melbourne Storm. Melbourne Storm, for people who know NRL, they are the holy grail. So for one for me to get asked, I think is like, for me it was like, oh, you know, it was real, um, very cool. I don't know what the wording is, but I was, it was not that I was fathead or anything like that. But don't to be think anyone's going to oh accuse you of God, being fathead. <laughs> to be recognised yes. and, and for somebody to ring me up yeah. and ask if I'd be interested. So that was the first thing. Um, the second thing is, as I say, the, the, the holy grail in sports. So to learn from them or to have access to their resources, their people. For me in coaching world was just a big tick. What can I learn from them? How can I pick it up, take it into netball? The third thing, which I absolutely loved, you're starting from scratch. So yeah, there's no blueprint on anything. You can put your mark on there. You can work with the people. The fourth thing was, there's so many things, but I know it off by heart, is Sunny Coast. It's a community that is so beautiful. It reminded me actually of Southland, who I was with before, community driven. It's one of those things when something happens, a whole community goes um, and and very supportive of mm. sport. And the fifth thing in, at that time was um, over my netball years, I have never worked in coaching, never worked and lived in the same place. Oh. My One of my daughters was hitting 15 mm -hmm. and uh, her dad were at the space of, you need to do something about your daughter, you need to stay home. So it was an opportunity that I'll be working and playing in the same place, so we'll be together more. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a good timing for us as our family. So I loved it. I just loved it and I still love that place and still got you know a lot of warm memories and great friendships. I bet. Yeah. So good. And you worked out how the Australians do I do out. their competition. <laughs> like I you're probably intersected with a whole lot of learning that yeah. you might not have if you hadn't have coached over there. Well, isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. You're coaching different people. Yeah. Different people from different countries, different walks of life. And once again, what I do, how I do it, how how would that be with this new group of yeah. people? Yeah. Um, so it gave me a lot of confidence, yeah. but also it gave me the opportunity to learn from them as well. Yeah. Um, and that mix is beautiful. So, so I hear you when you say that mix is beautiful, giving you confidence to do what you do and confidence in yourself and your mahi mm. and also learning. Do you yeah. think that they always should be partnering? Yeah, yeah, I do. That's how I, I suppose, you know, when you think of whanau, that's how it is. Uh, you know, it's the collaboration, it's the to a kind of tainer, you Older know, sister, it's the youngest. whole system, ecological, okay. how everything moves. Yeah. You learn, you share, um, reciprocally, you you get value out of that as yeah. well. So um, once again, those things ring true. It's yes. how it it's is. True. It's true. It's true. We're always yeah. learning, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. They say, if you stop That's learning, right. you're you did. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So I, I'm going to ask, what what does Fano first look like when you've got this amazing team? The Lightning wins the, yeah, the Australian yeah, competition. Yeah, yeah. Well done. Congratulations. Yeah, you. <laughs> and you've got this good family time going on. You're living and working with your family in a good community, and you get the call from the Silver Ferns. I don't know how it rolls out, and they say, "Do you think maybe you could come back and coach our team because we're having a bit of a uh, sticky situation over here right now." What does it look like going to your family? Or what does that look like when that invitation lands in you, in your body? Yeah, I think the first thing was um, while I was over in uh, Australia, my, my father passed away, actually, oh. I did come back. Yeah. My father passed away. And one of the things that I remember, actually, was Jenny, our CEO, um, came to his tangi. And where we are in this particular mud eye, it's not like, you know, downtown, like you've got to you got to go through the wop wops to get to where um, where he was, and you know when she did walk in, and I mean I hadn't had any um, contact with Netball New Zealand for a few years, apart from you know my mates and that. 
um, I was actually quite humbled uh, by her taking the time and um, some of our other people from Netball New Zealand was also there, one to show respect but also um, support yeah. as well. So, you know, that was big. Um, and that remained in my mind um, and not necessarily around the payback or anything like that but around how important people are um, and so you know six months or whatever later um, knowing what happened at Con Commonwealth Games as well and getting the phone call um, once again it's it's a tricky situation because I was already contracted to Sunny Coast and not very many times you'll be asked to look at something that you have to work with your current employers um, and you know and say hey there's another contract working for your country how can we both make this work um, and once again, you know, it takes a lot of discussion um, behind the scenes and um, for both Sunny Coast and also Netball New Zealand even to go into those discussions mm. and be courageous to look at a different way of working the contract but also working how I could be involved is, is massive. So, I mean, even that in itself was something... Um, not that I'm, pr uh, it's not that I'm p personally proud about, but it's looking at different ways. We don't have to do the same thing, you know, and all parties are happy to go into that space. I think that's just so cool and groundbreaking and evolves and moves people forward. So that in itself, once we got through that and we knew we could make it work and everyone was happy, oh, we're in. I'm in, we're in, and we're already, you know, how can we make it work and make it positive? And you did make it work, and mm. you did make it positive, and we won the next time yeah, we went to the yeah. competition. Can I talk about making your mark? Because you talked about the Sunny Coast team, and you get to make your mark, and you're talking about groundbreaking, I hear that, mm. and how you're proud to do new things and push it forward. Mm. Is that part of um, how you make your mark, is to to be quite creative in your, in your approach to life and coaching and your mahi, and to try new things? Yeah, yeah it is. I, um, I always think you've got to have a strong foundation, um, strong people in and around you that can um, guide you, you know, because there's sometimes when you're looking at different ways, you can not necessarily fall off the cliff, but um, you don't want it to be a negative for anybody. Um, so I, I love doing things differently. I think that's how I am too. I'm not in the. I'm not a nice little person in a box, and I never have been. Mm -hmm. But I like looking at ways how we can maximise. I always think our potential, um, whether it's as a group or um, as an individual, and what else is there. You know, I always tell the story of God. I can't even remember now his name now. I'm harping on about it uh, with the sailing and against. Um, Oh, we do know sailors between yeah, us. We know, a, you know, it when it was nine, we were nine, not, one down. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Spittle. Jimmy Spittle. Even though I keep saying I tell the story and I can't even remember his name. Yeah, that's sweet. But, one. hey, you know, like, oh, my God. You know, like, they were nine, one down. And they changed their boat. Going, changed their boat. <laughs> changed this, changed that, you know, and him even able to talk it up and say, hey, we're going to win. So, nine, two, nine, three. Nine, four, you know, all this sort I of don't stuff. Know. Yeah. You know, like, um, it's not necessarily that they won it, it was what was the stuff that they'd done behind the scenes to get their boat into that ability to compete. So, mentally, what would they have done? Wow. Where does your breaking the mold come from, do you think? Uh, I think my father. Yeah. He, he broke the <laughs> I think he broke the road all the time. Yeah. He was a very strong man, very uh, clear on his own values, um, and fought the good fight for many years and didn't quiver out of that. So uh, it, sometimes it's not until they actually pass away that you think, okay, that, yeah. So he modelled living his values, even when it cost him, probably. Uh, yeah. He was a Vietnam War vet? Yeah, yeah, he and was. He, and yeah, he was an yeah. activist? Yeah. And he was... A man who cared deeply yeah, for his, his and fought for his people. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he very much And did. was probably misunderstood regularly. Yeah, sometimes he was misunderstood and then sometimes the, at, 
Mm. Sometimes he went on his own too. You know, like sometimes I would say to him, there's other ways that you can do mm. things. Mm. You don't have to go hard. There's some soft things mm. that you can do mm. to make, help um, get people to understand your tucky, what you're trying to put forward. It's easy for me to say some of these things because I didn't live to the degree that he did and his mother did and his grandparents did. You know, so I'm coming in from the outside, but maybe through that outside perspective, we could move things faster or in a different way. Um, so that's all I sort of try to get in, get into him when I did talk to him about it. But uh, you know, sometimes it just goes, he does his own thing. <laughs> but I, I think those things came, have come through him. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And breaking the mold is, is is something that you continue to do because I I think about how. Um, well, there are some pretty amazing stories about you, and they are like you would give you gave birth maybe to your fifth child, and then that weekend, that next weekend, you were training mm. because that's what the role required, and mm. because of your commitment to the mm. role, mm. Um, which really is like saying um, a couple of things to me. Does it communicate to me, or as a woman, I am able and capable to do? Um, whatever I set my hand and heart mm. to and head to, mm. or or does it say to me? Oh my goodness! I could never do that, and I, I, I am, you know, it, it, you are an incredible human being who I could never emulate. So, so it's like it's it, obviously that depends on me and what mm. what perspective I take. But I know that you have advocated for women in sport to be able to have like a yes and mm. to be able to play yeah. and be mums mm. in a in a different way. And I think you've modelled that. Mm. I think yeah, there's different thoughts that you can have to that sort of situation I even think um because my husband says it all the time how lucky I am to have him and I say you're you're lucky to have me you know like you know and 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 that is another maybe perspective that you can look at you Mm. know like when you have a person that's sort of out the front Front. it's the people you know when you think about whānau or family it's it's your husband or your family at home who provide the substance or the strength around me as an individual in particular so um, you know I wouldn't have been able to do what I do without them Um, and obviously um, I'm been quite lucky where I I didn't have any problems around you know my pregnancy or giving birth and that's another thing that I think thank goodness because a lot of other women do so just um, you know just once again if if I can do it I will do it because it wasn't just about me Mm. I buggered up my timing and my planning of having my fifth child Usually I'm very good at those things, so I was sort of like a week out of <laughs> Can't here. you blame me, Eddie? The jeans, you know, <laughs> come on, let's go. So, you know, but, um, yeah, thankfully things were good for me, so I was able to do that, but I understand that others can't, and, and that's absolutely fine. So do you think consciously, as far as elite sport and the women in your team, do you think... If we can, if they want to become mums and keep playing, yeah. we can make that happen. Yeah. If they don't want to keep playing or they don't want yeah. to become mums, we can work with that. Yeah. Like, what's your attitude? Yeah, very much so. Look, I think the first thing for me is um, blessed women are blessed to have children, um, and not a lot of women can. Um, and, you know, sometimes you can plan like I do, and sometimes you can't, you just don't, and, you know, a child pops up. And, and it's it's a positive occasion if that's how it is for you and your husband or you and your family. So that's probably the very first thing for me. You think about whānau, how precious that is. Um, and it, I'll do whatever that needs to happen, one for that person, one for that baby, but also what needs to happen, hopefully that they still want to play netball or be a part of our team so you know we'll we take it slowly Mm -hmm. um and it's quite interesting when you have first time mothers because they think oh yeah I'm just having a baby and then I'm going to be out on court and and you think oh okay good luck and once again you can't say nothing to them they have to go and experience that themselves so um we've we're we're pretty good in netball I think I reckon we're very very good in once again the care and the nurture around the woman the family and then also hopefully I would like to think opening it up so that they can come back in when they're ready 
We're also very lucky in our sport as well because we have good people. We have support people. We have medical, mm -hmm. you know, um, our S&C, the, the experience now mm -hmm. to get the woman back to top shape, mm -hmm. knowing that their body has changed. Mm -hmm. Men, you know, like periods, what does that mean? You know, woman health, what does that mean? And we're venturing into that space more than we ever have. So, you know, if, if netball can champion some of the stuff that happened with woman um i think that's very cool and so it should be we should be working in that space because so often i love hearing you even saying periods like we're, we're better and better at talking about these things right because they happen once a month mm. to to every woman of childbearing age who is functioning in some way yeah. and so um oh, well do they only you know they're obviously medication aside mm. so is there it, like hormones are so often yeah. talked about negatively Mm. Oh, what's your opinion when, when if somebody wants to have like a if you're thinking about female hormones do you like go Ugh, or are you thinking differently about them um no i it's part of it i think it's um it isn't something that we talk about often is it um periods probably within netball or within the female sport needs to be taken into consideration anyway yeah. uh to here we go optimize or to um get the best out of that person so you have to understand some of the details but also once again which is really important especially in high performance sport that they keep that they have a monthly period that's really important and you hear a lot of other sports where women go through you know missing periods or not getting it at all that's unhealthy on their body so uh, we've got to make sure that happens and honestly like now oh god you talk about hormonal and I'm talking about myself um you know the the poor men and now they'll go oh god I'm just hormone don't worry if I'm forgetting about this I'm just going through menopause and I can hear that it's just like looking at me I said ask your wife you know your wife will understand and then it's actually quite funny because I go yes Yes, that's right. My so who, who are these conversations? Who are you oh, having so these conversations you know, with? You know, I, I, um, we've got a, quite a few men in our Silverfoo management group. Um, and, and you're on a few boards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I haven't got to the board yet. We haven't got time for me to be relaxed in those <laughs> ones. So I'm not too sure. If I feel really comfortable with our management group. Yeah. And, um, you know, we talk a lot about the families and, you know, whether your husbands or wives and, you know, because we're away quite a bit. So mm. I think there's just so many common themes. Um, and making sure, once again, when we are away, that we've got everything sorted at home. So, you know, I pop up with these things around, oh, okay, I'm, as I say, I'm, I'm hormonal, or this is what's happening in my life. And they just sort of look at me and, and, and actually agree, because there's quite a few of us that are in the same uh, age group. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. And I say, I'm, I'm sure there's something that's going to be happening to you too very soon and you need to tell me so then um, I know what it is, you know. So, uh, you know, we expect our athletes to be open, you know, in, in our management group. We expect our athletes to be honest and, and you know, have certain values. And so why aren't we as a management group? So, you know, you've got to walk the talk um, and not be worried about these things. But also I feel we're really comfortable in our group. So, you know, it's taken us a few years to get to that place once again. So you're talking about a safe place, yeah. a high trust place where yeah. you show up as yourself. Yeah, yeah, very much so. And is that one of your values that that's, bring yeah, yourself? Fano. You know, for, that, for me, that's what Fano is. That we don't have to agree, but you, mm -hmm. you, you back each other, you talk about things that you may not agree at, and then you work it forward. Be patient in how you work it forward um, to find that solution, but knowing that it's the collective. Um, so, yeah, it's not anything different. Do you think lots of coaches have a, like your collective mindset? Is that influenced by um, your upbringing? Yeah. By, yeah. It's influenced by my upbringing. I'm not yeah. too sure if other people, um, I think everybody has their own way. Uh, that's taken me a little while in coaching to learn that. Okay. You know, I always thought you had to be dictatorial and slam things down and, you know, not talk to people and be a certain way. Uh, as I got more experience, I found out you don't. You can just be yourself and and it, it sort of, it's quite interesting because it sort of reflects, your team sometimes reflects the coach or the person out the front. Yeah. Um, it's like mum and dad, uh, it's yeah. similar. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, do you get tired? 
yeah, I do. I do get tired. Fair enough. Yeah. I get tired sometimes. I'm, oh, honestly, I'm one of these people. I go home. I like, I used to, when I was over in Aussie, like uh, married at first sight. Yeah. You know, I watch all these things, these series that have got, you know, like, oh, just great. I love home programs. Yeah. You know, it's just nothingness and I blank it. And when we did... um, Married at first sight, you know, it was a good family thing. So we all sit there and watch and talk about that person and this person, and it, it was good. So it was, it's a nothing TV, and um, but it's if we can find a series that everybody likes. Tell me you've watched Ted Lasso. Oh, no, I haven't. Haven't you? No. I mean, maybe it's too close because he's a coach. Oh, <laughs> he's I've been told coach. about it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny. Huh? It's funny. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a nice series. Okay. Yeah, it's funny. Can I ask you, there's a bit about being an athlete where you have to be a bit selfish. Mm. You, you have to do your very best. Like there's, mm. a, there's, there's a lot at stake and winning is, is, the, is the goal. Mm. And so, you know, there's sacrifices being made potentially by um, your support people or, or by yourself as yes. an athlete. As a coach, how do you manage a group of high-performing, selfish yeah. <laughs> athletes? Yeah, yeah. Um, our sports psych says they're highly functional, functioning athletes. Um, and it's synonymous there with high performance athletes. Yes, not necessarily are they selfish, but they're very clear about what their plan is and they know what they need to do and how they're going to do it. So they can be quite um, focused, focused on that. Focused is a better word. And committed is another thing. So um, it's always a fine line sometimes when they are like that because then you've got to keep a balance on things. That's why I actually like with a lot of them if they do go out and work, you know, or have other interests outside netball. I think it's healthy and once again keeps it balanced so you're not just so caught up in it, mm. you know. So um, how do you bring it together? Um First thing I think, you know, like when you're working with a team, you need strong individuals who have a point of difference, and that's what I like. I think that's also a reflection of me. It's a celebration of the uniqueness of each individual, and also knowing that the individual doesn't have to be like anybody else. I don't care how you pass the ball or whatever, each person can do it differently, and I think that's a competitive advantage. You know, it's got something that nobody else can do that. You know, Aussies, they have, which is what their strength is, the conveyor, one goes out, another one comes in, they nearly look exactly the same because they've had that same system underneath and they do what they do really well. Whereas our diversity in New Zealand is is it. So you don't want to hammer that out. You want individuals to be who they are and be really strong about that. Um, So I think that's a first starting point. And then the next thing is I always think what's bigger than winning, you know, whether it's around our values or our vision um, and uh, probably the main thing that holds the culture together. Um, So it's really hard because there's so many elements, but Mm. it's sort of how the uniqueness or the individual not necessarily fits in the culture. It's how the culture Oh God! It's it's the people within the culture, you mm. know, and and their responsibility to the black fu- uh, to the silver fern mm. and the black dress, mm-hmm. their accountability around the um, their contribution, mm-hmm. their understanding of history. I think that's really important, you know, from the people beforehand where they sit and what they do now will become part of history in the future. Mm -hmm. Their understanding, that's really important. Um, And also, I always think, you know, that once again, they'll be safe in this environment, um, but they belong to something bigger than themselves. And I think when you can get into that space, man, they can move. They'll move heaven and earth to... To, to be themselves, but to give themselves. And I, that's that's always the, the best. The sweet spot. That's the sweet spot. When you're in that spot, mm. it takes a long time to get there, mm. you've won. Mm. You know, it's, it's bigger. And there's something profound about being, belonging to something bigger than yourself mm. or being part of something bigger mm. than yourself. It actually releases you, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. To be who you are. It does. Because you don't have to be everything. That's right. Isn't that crazy? It's amazing. That's that's the beautiful thing about it. And you know, when you find that balance, you know, people yin yang, we call wairua, wairua. when your wairua is settled and, and you and you be. Mm-hmm. It's like your stomach, you know, you sit and you know where you are, you know you're with your mates, 
you don't have to be anybody that you're not just yourself and you go and play and that's the that's we have a thing called pure uh, which is our values that's pure mm-hmm. you know, it's the pure you can't explain it because each person will have their own pure mm-hmm. um, and it's but, beautiful and you and that actually makes such a practical it makes so much practical sense because you're not spending energy yes. trying to impress or yes. be something other than or cover yeah. your tracks or yeah. meet up to what you said you yeah. are just doing you to the best of your ability yeah. in relationship beautiful ah. <laughs> okay can I ask because because you've become a dame you had significant success worked very hard you're tenacious and you have taken the learning you continue to learn and you were offered this um, opportunity to become a dame which I understand you didn't say yes to immediately you went to your Fano and to your netball New Zealand and worked mm. out what would you do um, that will have maybe brought more opportunity and more requests so do you want to say anything about becoming a dame but also how do you say no to stuff in your life yeah I get people to say no sometimes that's a good idea I get people to say it yeah. just depends who it is sometimes because sometimes um, it's easier for somebody else to say it than me yeah um, and um, it's just the timing sometimes of if I've got time to say no or, you know, if requests come in and then somebody else can deal with it, it's is no, great. Is no an okay answer? Yeah, no is a good answer sometimes. It is. It is a good answer and, and you only got you and you only got what you need to do at a moment of time and making sure that you spend that time wisely. Because um, sometimes as well, even though you might say no on that occasion, it might come back around um, and you might have time to do it another time. So, um, yeah, I have some really good people around me. Uh, but I also know when it needs to, I'm, I'll say no, or hey, I'll do it another another occasion. So, um, and the, with the damey thing, the yeah. damey thing. Um, once, oh God, I think probably if I go back to my father um, and possibly his um, tribal stuff and around, you know, the treaty and... Um, what the monarch means and also the I suppose the relationship between the tangata whenua and and Queen Elizabeth Mm -hmm. when you're signing the document Mm -hmm. so he's very clear on what his thoughts were about and because he had actually passed by the time I was asked to take the dame I had to really think about things Um, he had through his stuff had also been I don't know if it's offered or whatever something on the honours you know and he he didn't accept it because of that um, because of those reasons around tribal and um, so I that was probably the main thing that stood in my head uh, and I had to really once again sit on it for a long time to Mm -hmm. see if it was the right thing and then talking to various people sort of realised that he would actually be proud. Um, mm. My mother was still alive, and mm. then uh, and uh, she had heaps of uh, like a brain aneurysm and mm. strokes and things mm. like that. So it's not like she could talk. Mm. But when I did ask her, she had this biggest smile on her face, mm. you know. And then um, that was a sort of a bit of a tick, mm. and sort of just thinking, what would Dad say? Um, but I, I do believe he would have been proud no matter what, even though he, he'll be saying something himself. But, um, yeah, so then it's just once again going through that same process that yeah. I do, talking to different people. I do think um, probably one thing that I have become mindful of is that um, I've still got a lot to give to people um, and I've got a lot in the game. And I think for me and the timing of it, it just probably has kept me in the game maybe longer than I would have because I'm mindful that I've got to pay back. You know, it's not, once again, it's not just about me, but I've, I've got to earn, I've got to earn that acknowledgement that has been given to me. So whether it's like for the rest of my life or what, I'm not too sure. God, I don't know how long, but, you know, I've, I've got to stay in the game and mm-hmm. I've, I've got to try and help and um, whatever that takes or you know whatever situation arises out of that so I'm still in here and I, I think that's that's pretty cool and uh, yeah that's it's very cool I've got to say around that yeah very <laughs> cool is it fun has there been any good bits about being a dame I get I get awfully embarrassed 
Perfect. That's a good bit, is yeah, it? Yeah, <laughs> I, I do. I get embarrassed. Oh, I just enough. go, oh, God. Oh. Like this, hey. And, but, and, then, and then I just smile and you know, wave. <laughs> like this, wave, and like this. this is a wave. This <laughs> like this, you know, your arm goes like this sort of thing. Um, and then you just sort of go into the moment of whatever I'm doing. So I, I it just makes me cringe every time I'm sort of introduced like that. Yeah. I just, oh. Yeah. But... Yeah. Maybe one day it'll settle. It might filter down and and settle. Yeah, maybe. It might uh, sit. Yeah. Never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know. We've talked. You've mentioned um, a legend of the sport. You were talking about a player who made made space for you. They retired and they were a legend. They were an icon. And I've heard it said um, of of coaches, "There's nobody as good as you." What do you feel about being? becoming part of, being part of New Zealand netball history and being yourself a legend and an icon? Um, Very humbling once again. I don't see myself in that way. I always feel that there is always somebody better than you and there will be always somebody that's going to take it up another notch. I think, you know, we've all sort of added on to each other's, whether um, their prowess or their um, understanding of the game Mm. and we all build on Mm. what they've done in the past and keep adding on so I always think that once again I'm just part of the part of the process or part of the ladder or whatever you want to call it and then somebody else will take it on after me and add something else and something different Um, so it's, it's very humbling to sort of be acknowledged in that way but Personally, I don't see it like that. I just, yeah, I'm just another person on the rung of the mill and, yeah, someone else will add on something beautiful or take our sport into a different way. Um, And I think that's the coolest thing about it is how you evolve or organically grow um, to be better than what we were and and to improve. I think that's what it's all about, eh? And it's testament to what you were saying, which is you're part of something bigger. Yeah. But you are a good part of something bigger. You know, I, tr- I actually try to be. <laughs> you are. It's true, you I try are. to be. Yeah. I try sometimes. I just want to, uh, you know, like, uh, just do uh, yeah. You know, even yeah. when I'm at the supermarket, uh, just shut the, you know, like, yeah. get, get out of my way. Get out of my way. <laughs> you know, well, I'm going to go through that red light. You know, yeah. like, yeah, when yeah, sometimes know. it's like, oh, this, you know, how you have these little things on yeah. your shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you better not do that. You yeah. know, those sort of things. Yeah, but I do. I, I generally care for people, I really do, um, and I, I generally see the best in people, um, so once again, yeah, if I'm part of that, helping a person, I'll gladly do it. Mm. Awesome. Last, um, I've got one last question, but can you tell us the story about, I just wanted to just go into a story of your creativity in terms of coaching. I heard a story where you're in Birmingham and the crowd noise at the Commonwealth Games is like... Is, was it oh, World Champs? Yeah, yeah. Commonwealth Games. Commonwealth, yeah. The crowd noise at the Commonwealth Games is so profound yeah. that the players can't even hear each other. Like they're standing each other, but they can't hear each yeah. other. And you came up with a way of dealing with that that was yeah, quite creative. Yeah. Can you tell yeah. us about that? Um, well, there's actually quite a few good people around me, and we, we're always chatting about yeah. things. Yeah, the song, it's, you know, it's another day, it's another day. Um, And one of the things that we found in the round robin is that every time New Zealand went on, we weren't favourable with the English crowd. Okay. I personally take it as because we were a threat. You know, awesome. so I, I, like that. I yeah. sort of think that way. So, um, if you're not used to it as well, it can be quite daunting when you go out. So we we already knew that we were going to be in the semi-finals or you know, in, in the business end, we knew where we were going to be. Um, so one of the things we've got a really smart um, performance analyst and an IT geek or whatever they call him. So what we did was overlay um, the sound of the what do you call it the sound of um, the ambient sound of the crowd the sound like, was of the it? crowd yeah and overlaid that with it's another day it's another day we were playing England so we were knew we were getting them ready getting them ready for that um, so usually when you come down the tunnel what what usually happens is you get your name called out and then the crowd goes wild you know so I think I can't even remember whether we were the first ones. oh no we were we came out um, in the tunnel the second one with the England were coming out in the tunnel each person names wow 
So we had actually um, recorded that. Uh, we overlaid the song. So we the might be the two days prior to that particular game, we had them wearing uh, headsets at one of our trainings. It was only maybe about 40 minutes or so, um, and they trained with this particular loop on, so it just went around and around. Um, the positive things out of it, it's sort of like, um, how do you call it? Um, oh, Oh, geez, I'm terrible, long words. Mm -hmm. It's my hormones. It's the hormones, it's darling. Hormones. Darling, it's, it's her menopause. It's not, <laughs> it's not you. It's not you. I can't remember what the word is. Um, but uh, once again, they just get used to it. So it's desensitising them. Oh, yeah, desensitising. Desensitising to the sound, but also because of that song. Re you've got the, yeah, you're, re you're almost you're like rewiring. Rewiring it. it. sounds terrible. No, like it's we good. Say that way cause no, it's, it's rewiring. Oh, my gosh. You it's know, great. It's, it is. It's rewiring, but you can hear, like, so when we first came in, you hear the crowd, and then you just hear, you know, it's a lovely, lovely day. It's lovely. And you can see them smile, you know, when we're in the actual game, smile, and, you know, it's all right. And you can say these words, it's a lovely day, you guys. It's a lovely day. So you're not actually, to some degree, it's not about the game. It's sort of like what we're talking about. It's what's bigger. It's a lovely day. Look at this place. People want to see you play. They want to see entertainment. They want to see a good skill set. They want to see a game. They want to see you just own it. You know what I mean? So you can put other things in and mm. around it when you're mm. talking this way, mm. where it takes you out of the game, gives you freedom to express mm. yourself. And what you're beautiful. talking about, are so beautiful. What you're talking about are principles that we can take off the field, off the court, yeah. off the track, mm. and into life. And mm. I remember when I was... Um, briefly running around for a period of four years and overcoming breathlessness as I ran up a hill and and I was like oh I can do this when I meet difficulty in my work when I meet difficulty in my life I can keep going I can find ways to breathe and move mm. that are going to sustain me yes. so you can take learnings from all sorts of spheres can't you and 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 take them into the world so the mind's so powerful, eh? Mm -hmm. And we only go into a little, you know, as I keep saying, the sports site, she, he says, oh, we're only in a little small percentage in that. But the power of that, but also the power of everybody working, the, working together mm -hmm. and the collective and mm -hmm. every, you know, the smile mm -hmm. that comes yeah. off on that when you've got a bunch of people, women, you know, oh, watch, watch out, you know what I mean? So totally, watch out. it's actually that feel that... That drives, I think it drives my involvement in being a coach. It's got nothing to do, even though it has, you know, with coaching and, and, and sport as such. But it's 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 a it's it's life. You know, it's just at this moment of time we're doing netball, but there's so many transferable things you're gonna learn out on the court or learn under pressure that you would take into your life. You'll share it with your whanau, your babies, your kids. You know, and and really, that's the thing that drives me. Really, it's all the other stuff that goes around it. You know, that's that's pretty cool. I think bloody marvelous, <laughs> bloody, bloody brilliant, marvelous. bloody marvelous, <laughs> awesome, <laughs> it's awesome, Nolan, awesome. Okay, last question: Can you picture yourself as an eighty-year-old? You you've already got some okapuna, so you you yeah. you're lucky enough to be a grandma. Um, so. And you're 80 now. Mm. Um, what does your 80-year-old oh. self say to you today? Oh, God, I might start crying. Feel oh, free. I, yeah, I can actually picture myself as an 80-year-old. Um, oh, what would I? Oh, God. Um, I, I, th I think, um, you know, when you can sort of have that opportunity to sit back, you know, and... Um, not necessarily reflect on, I think, all the people who have gone in the past. You know, I think that's probably a thing that I want to hold to you. Um, all the involvement that you have with different people, whether your family or your sport. And, and, and I would hope that whether it's my family or uh, people that I have been involved with, that there's been something positive come out of it. You know, whether you've been selected or not selected, that we all... You know, we've done the best that we can and um, you live to fight another day. So I, I think that would be something, you know, if I probably now, who's to know what I'll be thinking in 80, when I'm 80, 
Um, I might be thinking, God, get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> get me out of here, I've had enough. But I, I hope, yeah. yeah. I just think, I think all the people, all, all the people of my past and, and all those people that I would have helped and, and where they're going to in the future, uh, I'd probably reminisce about that. Mm. Bloody marvellous. Yeah. Come and visit me. Come and visit me. Come and tell me your stories. Maybe that's what you'd be saying. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you my Noel story. No, Lang, you did good. No, no Lang, you I'll did tell good. Tell you a story. That's probably what I'd be like. Yeah, let me tell you a story. No, Lang, let me tell you a story. I'll tell you a story. <laughs> yeah, it might be that. Actually, that could be it too. I'll tell you a story. Yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Awesome. Thank you so much. Nga mihi nui kia koe for your time and your your sharing of yourself and your wairua and your wisdom, your matauranga. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Yeah.